Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth series of 2022 in IGS Geosynthetic Webinar under the theme Geosynthetic Reinforced Soil Structures, Developments from Walls to Bridges. This event is brought to you by the Indonesian Chapter of International Geosynthetic Society or in IGS. My name is Rifa Nur Kayungyun and it is a pleasure to act as your master ceremony in this event. Before we start, allow me to read the rundown of our event this evening. First, I will be reading the rules of the webinar. Second, there will be opening remarks by the president in IGS, Bapak Budianto Wijaya, PhD. After that, the event will be guided by Bapak Michael Dobi as our moderator to start the presentation of our speaker, Professor Fumio Tatsuoka. The event will then continue with a Q&A session. We would like to ask you to stay with us until the end of the event because we will be doing a quiz with a total of 250,000 rupiah for two winners. We will also give you access to the e-certificate at the end of this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, for your own convenience, please put attention to the following rules. You can submit your questions for the speaker through the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the screen. The question should be in English. You can raise your question before, during, and after the presentation of the speaker. We expect you to stay with us until the end of the event to get the information you need regarding the e-certificates and also the soft copy of the presentation from the speaker. This event is also live streamed on the INA IGS YouTube channel, or you can directly go to the link bit.ly slash live in IGS May 2022. If you have any questions, please contact Sandy at the number shown on your screen or there on the chat box. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite the president of INIGS, Bapak Budianto Wijaya, to give his opening remarks. To Bapak Budi, the time is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen especially for our distinguished speaker, Professor Fumio Tatsoka. Professor Fumio Tatsoka is the past president of the International Geosynthetic Society. We are delighted that he will deliver his presentation today for the NIGS webinar series. I hope this webinar can bridge the importance of current geosynthetic research and application. For the monthly 2022 webinar plan alone, we have invited four geosynthetics expert from Indonesia and abroad. Professor Tatsuka is the fourth speaker. This online webinar is free and we highly appreciate the enthusiasm from the attendees from more than 20 countries worldwide. Thus, we are confident that we can offer knowledge sharing platforms between academicians and practitioners in the future. In November this year, an international seminar will be held to commemorate the 30th anniversary of INA IGS. In this series of activities, in May, INA IGS will assess the results of papers submitted by students at the INA IGS Geosynthetics Paper Competition. The first to third winners will be invited to attend the INA IGS seminar on 23rd to 24 November this year. In addition, the first winner will have the opportunity to participate in the 7th GeoAsia conference in Taiwan in this year with funding from IGS. You are very welcome to join the NIGS International Conference Seminar on 23rd to 24 November this year, 2022, and membership of INA IGS. Thank you very much for the full support from our webinar series subcommittee. My appreciation also goes to all the audience for today's webinar. Finally, I hope this webinar can be one of your valuable sources. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bapak Budi, for your kind remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, now this webinar will be guided by our moderator, Bapak Michael Dobi. Before I give the floor to Bapak Michael Dobi, I would like to remind you that you can start submitting your questions from now. 
during and after the presentation by using the Q&A feature. We would also like to remind you to stay with us until the end of the event to get the information you need regarding the e-certificates and also the soft copy of the presentation from the speaker. Now, please welcome our moderator, Bapak Michael Dobi. To Bapak Michael Dobi, the time is yours. Uh, thank you very much. And um, tonight I have the great honor to introduce our speaker for this fourth um, webinar of uh, 2022 organized by the Indonesian chapter of IGS. Um, before I do that, I would uh, just like to, to thank the organizers who uh, organize these events and, and make them run so smoothly, um, as well as the attendees who, who join our events. And, and I hope very much that you uh, learn a lot and get a lot of information from these events. This is actually the, the, the 16th that we've done since we started at the early last year. So uh, we, we've covered a great deal of um, uh, subject matter. And tonight we have a very special one. As you've heard, and, and as you probably know from the notice, our, our speaker today is, is Professor Fumio Tatsuoka. Um, and of course, th this is a an extremely well-known name in the field of geosynthetics. I'm sure most of you will have, will, will have heard about um, the work of uh, Professor Tatsuoka. Um, and today we're going to learn a, a, about a very special topic that, that he's been involved with for uh, many years, which is, is the design of reinforced soil structures, in particular to resist earthquakes and, and using special techniques that you'll learn about uh, during his presentation. Now, I need to be pretty quick with my words because I've got a pretty good idea about uh, how much material um, uh, we're going to be, be receiving from uh, Fumio. So, uh, but I'd like to say a couple of things of a, of a slightly more personal nature because um, actually I first came across uh, Professor Tatsuoka uh, at, at a time soon after the, the terrible Kobe earthquake in 1995. Um, and I'm sure, well, many of you will remember that, the, the older people listening in today, maybe not the younger ones, but it was a pretty terrible earthquake. And um, Fumio did a lot of work in investigating the performance of structures, in particular retaining structures um, during that event. And he wrote a very, well, he wrote a number of papers, but one in particular is a paper I still look at today. It's like a kind of... Um, a handbook of the performance of, 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 in fact, of all forms of retaining structures during a strong earthquake. And if you've never come across this paper, I, I, would, I would urge you to, to find it because it's extremely good. Uh, and also at the same time, he was very, very kind to send a, a, a large set of slides because this, this was in the days before we had digital cameras. So he sent a large set of slides to my boss in the UK uh, and, and we've used these images ever since to try to illustrate many of the important points about uh, reinforced soil structures in strong earthquakes. And um, I still use these images today. Pumi, I must thank you again for sending those to, to us all those years ago. And you might see a few today as well, uh, those who are listening in. Um, also, another slightly personal note, in, in 1997, I was lucky enough to go to Long Beach in California uh, where Fumio presented the third Mercer lecture. Um, and I think that some of the material was probably uh, an, an early version of what we're going to hear about today. Um, and I've listened to quite a few more lectures since then from our speaker. And, and I think what's always impressed me is how they are continuously updated. There is always new information coming into the presentation material and, and we learn new things every time it's presented. So uh, it, it's, it's a real treat to have a chance to listen to such an accomplished speaker and such a, you know, someone who's so thoroughly researched, and investigated these forms of structure. Um, as you can well, as you can see, um, uh, Fumio was a, was a past president of the IGS uh, and, and has held many other important posts and, and honors. Um, you can read them. I don't need to read through them on the screen there to save time, but uh, it's a great accomplishment. And also he's published many papers on, on geosynthetics and um, uh, it's a wealth of information and, and well worth looking out for his papers if you, if you want to learn about this topic. 
Um, now, we're actually welcoming Fumio back to Indonesia. He, he's been here three times, I think, he, he told me. And um, this fourth time, he's coming in a, an electronic form only. Uh, I'm very much hoping he might come back in, in his real form before too long. Uh, and anyhow, I, I'm a stop now and, and welcome you. And, uh, and just tell you, Fumio, I'm very much looking forward to your presentation. And it's time for me to hand over uh, and, and let you present your, your webinar tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So I, so this one, can you see? Oh. Yep, we can see now. We can see oh, now, oh, but oh, not oh. You're presenting yet. You're not presenting yet. You need to press present. Oh, how to do that? <laughs> Normally down at the bottom on the on the right hand side. This just is just, hidden. That is oh here, here, here. Yeah, that's yes. it. That's the one. Yeah, okay. That's perfect. Okay. So I this move. Yes, to... perfect now. It's perfect. Okay. Yes. Uh, good, thank right, you very right. much. I, I will yeah. mute. <laughs> uh so good evening. So the topic is uh the synthetic reinforced soil structures, developments from walls to bridges. Oh, yes, there is a point. Okay. <clears throat> so the, the abstract is this, a development and construction of uh, various types of the synthetic reinforced GRS structures, including those for high-speed railways for the last about 40 years is present. <clears throat> In the 1980s, GRS retained walls with full height rigid facing was developed. After the <clears throat> reinforced backfill and the subsoil has deformed sufficiently, the full height rigid facing is constructed, firmly connected to reinforcement layers. In the early 1990s, GRS bridge abutment, which supports a simple girder at the top of the full height rigid facing, was developed. In the early 2000, 2000s, GRS internal bridge was developed which integrates both ends of a continuous gutter to the top of the full height facings of a pair of GRS retained walls. A number of embankments, retained walls, and bridges that collapsed by recent earthquakes, floods, and tsunamis were restored to GRS structures. The total wall length of these GRS structures is now about 200 kilometers, any problem during and after construction has not been reported, while very high cost effectiveness has been uh, validated. The first topic is a recent top uh, typical GR structures for railways in Japan. This is showing a network of high speed railway in Japan, Shinkansen. So, first one is 1964, and red part is under construction. So, <clears throat> I'll show you uh, the typical site for this uh, highway, uh, uh, Shinkansen. At this site, uh, here, R means GR's written wall, yeah, yeah. and A means GR's bridge abutment. You see here the bridge abutment. In total, 33 were, uh, con was, were constructed for this line. <clears throat> GRS internal bridge, uh, I'll explain this later. And uh, B is a, a GRS box culvert. And T here is a GRS tunnel entrance exit protection. This is a cross view of the site. Uh, this is a, a box culvert, GRS box culvert. This GRS retain walls. And this is GRS tunnel entrance exit protection. This is showing GR's bridge abutment under construction. So first, the uh, shallow ground improvement is made when necessary. Then the, uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, reinforced backfill is constructed. Then a through height ridge facing is constructed. Then uh, bearings and finally uh, gutters. And uh, 
this is a completed one. Uh, <clears throat> for Q this place, uh, this line will uh, be opened this September. At this place, a uh, number of DR structures constructed. For example, DR bridge abutment 78. Uh, this is 89% uh, eight, uh, of total bridge abutments. This is a, a DR retaining wall surrounding a depot of this site. The highest wall height is a 12.4 meter. And this is showing how bridge uh, DR's bridge abutment was constructed. First is a bench cutting of the natural slope. Second is the uh, construction of a port field. Uh, this is the grit reinforced, well compacted, lightly cement mixed gravel soil. Third is the compaction of the backfill, at least 95% of uh, uh, the max at uh, obtain water content by modified proctor. And this is showing an arrangement of the grid layer. And this is a completed approach field. A six is the a completed GRS bridge abutment after the construction of floor height facing. So, uh, and th this is a GR tunnel entrance exit pr protection. So, this uh, tunnel entrance exit protection may, uh, is constructed in this way backfield and so on so on. The point is that the this full height facing is not structurally uh, 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 is uh, full height facing is structurally separated from uh, RC turning lining to avoid the stress concentration. This is showing how the GR's internal bridge was constructed. Uh, First is excavation of subsoil. Second is the construction of, of approach fill. Uh, here is a zero uh, <coughs> grid reinforced backfill, and this is a, um, a left backfill. Then the construction of flu height rigid facing after the deformation of the backfill and subsoil has taken place sufficiently. Then the uh, a PC gather is located here. This is a cross section of PC gather. Then finally, the uh, uh, structural integration of both ends of gather to the floor height facing. Then construction of other structures. So this is a completed uh, DR bridge ab abutment. So this is showing the uh, the length. Uh, of DR's uh, structure construct every year. And uh, starting from 1989, today it reached 200 kilometer. So uh, this year, uh, the construction of high speed railway was restarted. Then we had a number of earthquakes like this. So we have uh, many stories by these earthquakes, as I, which I, I'm, I will explain later. And this is showing the location of DR structures constructed in Japan and several places uh, uh, in Indonesia and Philippines now. And uh, I like to uh, emphasize that we, there is no problem problematic case during and after construction in all these projects. So no problem, zero problem so far. This is the uh, DR retaining wall at the pot for the uh, mass rapid transit in Jakarta. And this is a la uh, mass transit. And here the depot. Depot is surrounded by retain walls. And uh, th this part is DR's retain wall. This is DR's retain wall under construction before the construction of flow height facing. This is after the construction of flow height facing. This is the view here. So this is the, the uh, crest of who had ridge facing. And, this, and you can see the railway track is constructed very close to the who had ridge facing. You can see. This is a, a, a DR structure for railway in Manila, Philippines, from here to here. And uh, <coughs> uh, uh, many uh, DR structures are now under constructions. 
For example, on this site, here's a DR, uh, here's a DR3 tunnel wall, and here's a DR3 internal bridge. Here's also short span, but this is DR3 internal bridge, and so on. This is a view of uh, DR3 tunnel walls for both sides under construction, like this. This is a, a cost estimate, cost comparison of the cost for conventional RC viaduct. When this cost is one, the cost for DR's retain wall in this case is a 0.5. Uh, when the uh, ground improvement is, uh, is not performed, when the, uh, the depth of ground improvement increases, the cost for, for DR's retain wall increased. But even at the depth of 10 meter, this is still 85%. This is a, a cost comparison uh, made for a high-speed train uh, in India. So in this case, is a, a conventional a cantilever RC retain wall having a pile of uh, 20 meter length. And uh, this is DRS retain wall without piles. In this case, the construction cost for DRS retain wall is only uh, 0.32. And the maintenance cost is uh, 0.5, and the total cost of, for DR retain was only 0.33 compared to this conventional retain wall. Even when the no piles uh, for uh, conventional <coughs> retain wall, the cost is for DR structure is still this low. The summary of the first part. DR structures with full hydrated facing have been become the standard railway soil structures in Japan. A number of DR st structures were constructed in place of conventional type embankments, rail tin walls, and bridge apartments. And this is due to that. Compared with the conventional type soil structures, DR structures exhibit higher performance under long-term ordinary conditions and uh, against earthquakes, heavy prolonged rainfalls, floods, and tsunami, and uh, lower construction, a uh, lower cost for both of construction and long-term maintenance. So next, several theoretical and the technical basis for the DR structure will be explained. Second, a topic is uh, in extensive versus extensive reinforcement and flexible and stiff facing. So we have two types of reinforcement in extensible and extensive. We have two types of facing, one the flexible one, not developing high earth, earth pressure on the facing, and the stiff one de developing high earth pressure on the facing. So we have a four different types by this combination of two factors. This A is the metallic skin uh, facing, this one, so-called terrame. And uh, this is a, a discrete concrete panel with uh, uh, metallic strips. So this is the uh, wrapped around facing using a zero grid. This is a modular block facing using a zero grid. D, and E is a, a full height read facing using uh, the grid. This is what we developed, E. <clears throat> Previously, many consider that facing is only to prevent the spring out of backfill and to achieve a small wall deformation and a high wall stability, it is necessary to keep low, not high, keep low, the earth pressure on the facing. So flexible facing is A and C is sufficient. However, we have often observed that when using a flexible facing A and C, the earth pressure on the facing is low, but the wall deformation is generally large, indicating the paramount importance of using stiff facing. That means when the facing is flexible, uh, we have very low earth pressure here. Very low earth pressure on the face means low tensile forces in the reinforcement, in particular at low uh, places. 
So connection of force is zero. So we have a low tensile forces. In then in the active zone, the low confined pressure and therefore low stif strength and stiffness of the backfill. Then we have a large wall deformation and the low stability of the wall. So this is a test embankment which constructed in 1982. This is a clear backfill and the uh, face, uh, wall face is uh, wrapped around, so very flexible. So we had a very large deformation of the wall. So we learned that mm, this, is, this does not work. So, so the, on the other hand, we have consistently observed that the, at the stiff facing, that is firmly connected to the reinforcement layer, case B, like this, and case D, and case E. These cases, in this case, large up as pressure develops, which result in a small wall deformation and high wall stability. This means that when the stiff facing is firm, uh, stiff facing is firmly connected to the reinforcement, we have a high ass pressure here. That means a high uh, connection strength. The high ass pressure on the facing means high tensile forces in that reinforcement, even at low uh, levels. <clears throat> this means in active zone we have a high confined pressure, therefore high tensile, a high strength and stiffness of the backfill then we have a small wall deformation and high stability of the wall. This is the observation of such high connection force with Terra Arme. This is during construction. The uh, connection force develops during construction of the wall. Then we have a uh, high tensile forces. So we can see that this, this is distribution of the tensile force and reinforcement, this metal strips. So we have a high uh, connection force. So then this results in the uh, stable behavior of wall with small uh, deformation. So uh, previously, uh, many considered that the uh, for small uh, uh, deformation and high wall stability, discrete panel facing or modular block or B or C is sufficient. But full height edit facing is not necessary. However, we observe, we have often observed that the use of full height edit facing is very effective to decrease wall deformation while increase the wall stability. So this is a two test embankment we constructed uh, 1987 to 1988. Uh, this is the uh, sand backfill, this is a clay backfill. Uh, this is before the construction of full hydrate facing. This is a completed full hydrate facing. So we uh, observe a, a long-term behavior of the, this model wall. So discrete panel facing shows some noticeable deformation for two years, uh, but the lead facing did not show any deformation or displacement. Same thing for other sections. So we performed a, a loading test to bring the, this wall to failure. Each section having a, a discrete panel facing. By loading here, the buckling of the facing here, this is a cross section of this section after excavation. Here is a, a, a discrete panel facing, loading is here. So failure plane like this. So by this loading, this uh, uh, seg uh, segment H exhibited this uh, behavior. So this is a uh, average uh, footing pressure plotted ag against the uh, lateral displacement at the top of the facing. So uh, facing uh, segment F, this is the uh, lead facing, but the uh, uh, length is reinforcement only 1.5 meter compared to the wall height is five meters, very short. Yet this shows a better performance. And the segment D uh, uh, is more stable uh, because uh, the length is two meter. Uh, uh, yet C, D, and H having flooded facing, uh, the stability of the segment F and D was controlled by the yielding of construction joints. 
here because this facing is a uh, concrete facing without any steel reinforcement. So, free height lead facing for the, all the prototype DS knitting walls constructed service country are uh, all largely steel reinforcement. So, uh, some issue about the extensible uh, metallic strip. Uh, previously, uh, many considered that for small wall deformation and high wall stability, that it is necessary to use inextensible reinforcement, such as metallic strips. Uh, this is the must, uh, many people consider in that way. Also, metal, uh, metallic strips are ex extensible. They have uh, the following two major pro potential problems. One is erosion, uh, corrosion, uh, so corrosion. The second is low pull-out strength. So this I'll discuss the second point. This is a failure of terrain wall. Uh, uh, relatively short metallic strips was used to reduce the amount of the excavation. This resulting a pull out at low levels and pushing out of the several discrete panels, finally a collapse of the four, four wall. To avoid this type of failure, to avoid failure, uh, the, we use a uh, relatively long metallic uh, strips. Uh, this can prevent the throughout failure, but it increases the amount of the excavation while requiring the use of the anchored seat piles like this. So this increases the construction cost and the construction period. So we are using a DR retaining wall with flat red uh, facing, but basic reinforcement very short. We can use this short basic reinforcement uh, uh, without losing wall stability due to high proud strength of the planar geotextile and by using the several long geogrid layers and, and the use of flat ridge facing. These arrangements uh, decreases the amount of excavation here uh, while not requiring the use of anchored seed pile. So, summary of this discussion of this chapter, E, through height rigid facing firmly connected to the reinforcement layers can ensure small deformation and high stability of the wall, wall even when using a relatively short so-called extensive reinforcement. That is, uh, uh, for example, the grid. And the full height is facing is also a good solution for good durability and aesthetics. One remark is that at the same time, good compaction and good drainage of the backfill are imperative for a good wall performance. So next is the insight into the function of through height rigid facing. So first of all, I like to say, Conventional uh, uh, retain wall is a cantilever wall. Yeah. So then we have a large force in the facing, and then we have a large overturning moment and large lateral load at facing base. So we have a large stress concentration here. So, uh, and uh, unstable behavior, particularly against such loads. So we need a, a, a massive, uh, strong earth facing structure supported by a pile foundation. This is a collapse of gravity type wall during 1995 COVID earthquake. This is a kind of country of a wall. You can see overturning failure, this is me. So this was uh, designed uh, uh, but using a, a seismic coefficient 0.2 with a safety factor equal to 1.5. Yet, uh, seismic growth is so strong, we have a, this kind of failure. On the other hand, uh, oh, GR's uh, retaining wall is not cantilever structures. So, uh, the, with respect to force equilibrium A along a potential active failure plane, at each level, 
uh, active earth pressure is resisted by the tensile reinforcement layer, unlike river structures. Oh. With respect to the uh, equilibrium B uh, uh, at, along the back facing, again, at each level, the earth pressure on the back face of facing is resisted by the tensile force at construction and uh, connection between uh, the reinforcement and facing. So uh, this is showing a paramount importance of the sufficient connection, uh, uh, connection strength. So uh, uh, co continuous, uh, uh, full height ridge facing is a continuous beam supported by uh, many reinforced layers at a small span, actually 30 centimeter. As a result, we have very small forces in the facing. So uh, we, uh, a simple function structure is sufficient. And also we have a small overturning moment uh, and small lateral load out of the facing base. So we don't need a, a power foundation and the, the wall can be stable even against such loads. Oh, oh no. This is showing a DR retain wall uh, before uh, uh, it's a. Uh, 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 1992, immediately after com completion. This is the same wall a week after the 1995 Cobb earthquake. Uh, we observed a very high performance during this very severe earthquake. Yet, however, a limited amount of, of but a noticeable shared deformation is about uh, uh, 26 meter by 6 meter equal to 4.043 uh, was observed at the highest section. This shear deformation is due likely to use of a short zero grid, only a two meter long. So this is only 40% wall height uh, for five meter. So then uh, what is the necessary and sufficient length for wasability? We perform the uh, <clears throat> uh, shaking table test, so simulating a gravity type written wall, and also simulating uh, this DR uh, written wall having a short textile. This uh, was designed by the old code. Uh, so, uh, in this particular site, all the textile layers are very short uh, uh, due to specific space restriction. So yet this uh, uh, wall survived. This is, is showing a result of the shaking table test. This is a displacement at the top against the seismic coefficient applied. So gravity types show this large displacement and this DRS return will show the better performance. Yet we have a, a noticeable shear deformation. So other conventional type, cantilever, linear type, show the similar behavior. And the zero textile wall, uh, R1, R2, R3 are better performance. R3 have an, a, a long zero textile reinforcement. And R2 is uh, here, you can see only two layers uh, are long. So higher uh, stability, uh, R3, R2 than R1. R2, this is more stable than R1, while similar behavior as R3. And this means more cost effective than R3 because of a less amount of the textile and less amount of excavation here when constructed on the existing slope. So R2 is recommended and specified as a standard type in the current design code. So this is the uh, uh, when we make a wall on the slope, this is the conventional method. This is a gr wall, but modular block is used here. In this case, we need a long reinforcement. So in both cases, uh, uh, the two methods require large slope excavation and the use of a temporary anchored seat piles, which largely increase the construction cost and period. Why we need a long textile when modular block facing is used? 
this is because when facing uh, the are short and uh, a failure plane become very shallow, then we have uh, uh, then the uh, resistance against the uh, lateral sliding and the overturning becomes low. And the modular block is not rigid enough to prevent such a local failure like this. So we uh, use a long reinforcement to make the uh, failure plane deep like C. Uh, the, usually the minimum length is a uh, uh, minimum ratio L by H is uh, 0 0.7. Uh, <clears throat> so th then the, uh, we have sufficient uh, stability against lateral like, uh, sliding and over time. But uh, the, the, we, we need a, a large excavation here. In this case, on the other hand, reduction of wall stability by the use of uh, a short uh, basic reinforcement layer is here in this case. Uh, this is covered by use of several long reinforcement layers and the uh, use of flood ridge facing. This arrangement one or two facilitate integrated behavior of the enlarged reinforced zone, reducing a shared deformation and increasing uh, the wall stability against overturning and lateral sliding, particularly by such modes. And and the uh, stability against concentrated load here near the wall at the crest. So by vertical load, for example, and uh, we may we can construct bridge garden here. So this type we are now using uh, a small amount of slope excavation and no need for a use of anchor steel pile. So much more cost effective and shorter co construction period than two methods shown here. So uh, this is our current design. The, the length of the basic degree de de is the largest value among 35% of wall height or 1.5 meter or the length required for a sufficient stability against overturning, lateral sliding and shear deformation evaluated by a new mark method based on the two wedge method. So uh, the, some advantage of the flow uh, height it's facing is a three dimensional effect. Each GRS wall section between two uh, consecutive construction joints behaves monolithically. So local failure is very difficult to take place. Even if local failure takes place, the collapse of four wall, wall hardly take place. So on the flow height facing, can support uh, external load here at V and H uh, caused by electricity supply pole or noise barrier or a, a, a crash barrier and uh, a gutter bridge like this. Hmm? So then we go back to the uh, conventional structure like this. These are uh, costly, but there are some advantages limited occupied space and the facing of the retained wall can be support, can support other structures. When we use uh, this modular block facing, the less costly, but uh, we need a buffer zone uh, to ensure safe operation of road and railway. So the wider occupied space and the facing cannot effectively support other structures. On the other hand, this fluid is facing is uh, uh, less costly and also uh, like conventional written wall, uh, walls and uh, uh, viaduct, railway, uh, road and railway can be uh, arranged very close to the facing, so limited occupied space. And the facing can effective support other structures here like this, L like this, you can, this actual case. Or like this, here you can train the landing very close to the wall face and the small excavation here. This is a site in Tokyo. So summary uh, 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 of the function of flight facing, 
The facing is an important and essential structure component that confines the backfill, develops large tensile forces in the reinforcement and supporting other structures. So the facing should be rigid enough during service. On the other hand, on the other hand, facing should be deformable enough during wall construction to accommodate the deformation of backfill and supporting ground. So this is the contradiction. But this contradiction can be solved by state construction. Next is the advantage to state construction of hydraulic facing. This is a, a, a before the start of construction, you see. Then this is a, com a completed backfill, but before the construction of hydraulic facing. And this is a completed wall after construction of the fragment facing, you can see. So this is a cross view of the wall, completely wall. So state construction is made in this way. Uh, first is the uh, leveling part for facing, the gravel uh, backs wrap around with the textile. Next is the uh, 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 compaction of the first layer. Next is the uh, compaction of the second layer. Uh, for good compaction, uh, the, this vertical spacing is 30 centimeter, then lift will become 15 centimeter. And there's no rigid facing existing during vertical com uh, compaction. This is the complete wall, but before the construction of rigid rigid facing. The after deformation of the backfill and some soil has taken place, then rigid rigid facing is constructed by casting in place fresh concrete here uh, directly on the, the uh, grid wrapped around wall face. So this is concrete form outside, and this is no concrete form inside, and uh, fresh concrete is cast in place here. So fresh concrete enters the gravity, uh, gravity box through, our, uh, through the aperture of the zero grid. Then facing connection and the zero grid reinforcement are firmly connected to each other. High connection force between the uh, backs and uh, facing were confirmed by field test and laboratory test. And this, the, uh, this is a typical complete wall. So the, I'm talking about advantage of state constru uh, uh, construction procedure. First is a Com completed wall exhibited a very small radial deformation, radial differential settlement between facing and uh, backfill. And, uh, and the gravel backs protect the facing and the grid connection. So facing the grid connection is hardly damaged during service. And the construction of GRD wall using a compressive backfill and or on a compressive subsoil becomes possible. This is a case uh, constructed on very soft clay deposit, 30 meter uh, clay deposit. So, and uh, uh, backfill was weak, weak soft soil and, uh, and uh, I say very thick soft clay and no pile foundation allowed. So these problems were over overcome by state construction. First, DR3 thin wall without through hydrated facing, and then preloading here, and settlement about one meter, and the removal of preload fill, the final construction of hydrated facing. This is during preloading fill, so one meter settlement. After removing preload fill, this through height uh, facing was constructed. Uh, I took this picture 20 years after construction. Uh, so uh, I'll skip this, oh, okay. Uh, box carabat is constructed in this way. And, uh, uh, but we have several problems by compression of settlement. So we have a uh, 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 bumping air and roll concentration and negative friction. So this is a really problem. With GR, GR, uh, 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 GR box carabat is constructed in this way shallow ground improvement and the construction of the, uh, uh, the grid reinforcement embankment. 
we have a com com uh, compression of the backfill and the settlement of the ground. Then we have construct a GIS carpet. Uh, side walls are connected to the good layers. Then backfilling here, so no problem with bumping here. So summary, by stage construction, during wall construction, the facing is deformable enough to accommodate the deformation of the backfill and support ground. During long-term service, the facing is stiff enough to achieve small wall deformation and high stability of the completed wall. And as a result, construction of a GRC wall using a compressive backfill and or compressive subsoil becomes possible. Next is bridge abutment and GRC internal bridge. So this is the conventional simple garden bridge. This has a several serious problem. To solve these problems, uh, uh, first is an uh, internal bridge. The second is a uh, GRC bridge abutment. Third is a uh, GRC inter internal bridge. We, with the conventional simple garden bridge, we have uh, we construct first pile as abutment. Back then problem starts as pressure and displacement and the settlement lateral flow. Then the, uh, we construct the bearings, but this is costly for construction and long-term maintenance. We have a, a long-term settlement and a large deformation and dislodging of simple gala during earthquake. So what is the solution? First solution is an integral bridge. This construct in this way, piles uh, are facing, condensed gutters, and integration here and back here. But uh, so a large number of internal bridges were constructed in the United Kingdom and the United States. However, there are a number of problems. First, the, uh, we have uh, this earth pressure problem and uh, this uh, settlement and lateral flow problem and the long-term settlement and uh, sudden settlement during a fast growth. A new problem is the, this. We have a seasonal thermal expansion and contraction of the gutter. This develops cyclic lateral displacement. This results in a settlement here and the increase in the uh, earth pressure. Uh, this is due to a so-called dual latching mechanism. When the wall displaces in this way, active failure we have. When the wall uh, is displaced in the passive direction, active fear does not move, but the uh, passive wedge is formed. The second active displacement, this active displacement is deactivated. And the second passive movement, now uh, this active wedge does not move, but uh, the activation of deformation of displacement of passive wedge. So active failure and the passive uh, earth pressure development take place independently. Uh, I skipped the test results. Anyway, then we go to the this uh, DS bridge abutment. First generation is uh, this uh, about uh, 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 and the second. Generation. Second, I will explain second generation. GRS uh, wall is first constructed through the ridge facing, and the uh, uh, garden foundation is connected to uh, uh, through facing. Then uh, bearing is placed and simple garden placed. So uh, this is cost, uh, highly cost effective and stable when compared to the conventional type bridge abutment. And this is statically determinate. So not sensitive to the GDR displacement of the facing that may take place during long-term service. So uh, the, the, uh, uh, this is rather simple to design and construct. construct. This is a typical case. This is a bench cut of slope and the construction of approach field. Here is a, a full hydrate facing on which gather is placed. 
the first one was construct nine uh, two or three for the high speed train here, uh, two or three. So full scale loading test was performed to, by applying a horizontal load to evaluate the uh, stability of the uh, this DRS bridge abutment, particularly separation between facing and uh, backfield was avoided. We observed that the, the, this is really stable and the separation strength is very high. So uh, after this first DRS bridge apartment two or three, uh, we cons uh, and we construct the many uh, DRS bridge abutment. After construction of the first one at the uh, Tanata, by 2022, about 130, uh, 139 have been constructed, including uh, 33 for uh, Hokkaido Shinkansen, 79 for Kyushu Shinkansen, 21 for Hokkaido Shinkansen. So then finally, DIS, the internal bridge. If we uh, place a simple gather on the facing of the uh, DIS written uh, wall, then we have uh, two problems. One is a uh, high cost for construction and maintenance by bearing, and the low seismic stability of the gather at the movable bearing. So, so we remove these bearings. This is a DRS intangle bridge, fast backfill and uh, flood with facing and the continuous gather. So structure integration here. So the model test we performed to confirm the stability of the wall, but I, uh, uh, this one showing the very small settlement here uh, in the IGS, uh, this in the integral bridges, uh, the textile and connection here. And the shaking table tests were performed. And uh, this is a, a, a conventional type gravity uh, type uh, abutment and DRS bridge abutment first generation, integral bridge, DRS integral bridge. This is uh, lateral displacement at the top, DT. This is a basic acceleration. We have a large displacement at the top in this case, and here's also large uh, displacement at the fixed bearing. And the integral bridge shows the large displacements at the bo bottom. But the DS internal bridge show uh, nearly zero displacement at the top, and the uh, displacement takes place after uh, connection failure between uh, uh, the textile and facing. And the settlement here is very small, uh, small uh, with DS internal bridge. But the settlement bump is very large with conventional type gravity wall and also uh, internal bridge. So we constructed the uh, full-scale uh, model of GRS internal bridge, and we perform cyclic loading tests simulating uh, seismic and uh, thermal effects. Oh, oh. Oh. Sorry. Then we first one was constructed here. This one. This is uh, the spine is 12 meters very short, but uh, this is the real first one and for high-speed train. Then the uh, second one was constructed here, three GRS integral bridges. This is after tsunami. Uh, this is a, a simple gather bridge. So two simple gather were washed away by the great tsunami from Pacific Ocean. So three candidates were considered for to restore this one. First one is a uh, original simple gather bridge. Second one is this bridge, uh, continuous bridge, but the both end we use a bearing. The last one is a, a DRS internal bridge, continuous bridge and no bearings. This has a low cost and high seismic stability and anti, high anti-tsunami stability. So this was adopted. So this one, this is a complete one. Total span is 40 meters. At another place, here is again, this simple gather was washed away by tsunami. And uh, uh, this is the complete one, a total 
length is uh, 60 meter, central pier is only to support vertical load, and the, uh, this garden is continuous. The both ends are constructed, uh, connected to hydrant facing. See? So, uh, GIS bridge abutment supports a simple gather at the top of the flat facing of GIS retain wall. GIS integral bridge struct structurally integrate both ends of continuous gather to the flat, uh, flat uh, facing of a pair of GIS retain walls. Compared with the conventional type bridge abutments, convenient bridges, these are much more cost effective, exhibiting much higher stability against seismic loads, floods, and tsunami, and no bump right back behind the uh, uh, facing. There are now the standard bridge abutments for railways, including high speed railways. Shinkansen. The last topic is a collapse of soil structure by earthquakes, floods, and the tsunami, and uh, restoration to the uh, structure. So this is uh, the case here, Kobe. This is a collapse of conventional type retain wall. This will uh, restore to the uh, structure. And here is another case. Uh, this is a collapse of the conventional type uh, retain wall and the failure of the slope uh, embankment like this. This uh, blue one is before the collapse, and solid one is after collapse. And the red one is the restored structure. This is the uh, retain wall. And this is during uh, construction. And uh, this is another site. You see the failure of the embankment on slope. This is uh, restored uh, retain wall, this uh, retain wall. Here's another case is a collapse by flood. Here is a, a embankment between tunnels. This uh, embankment fully uh, washed away by overtopping flood. So this was reconstructed in this way. You can see DR sitting over here and DR embankment to reduce the total amount of earthwork and uh, increase the stability wall. This 1990 and this 1991, and that this was 1994. And uh, another uh, type of collapse of conventional type uh, uh, country living wall, living wall is by scouring. Then this overturn failure, then uh, uh, collapse or embankment. On the other hand, we can expect much better performance of GRT turn wall with the full height ridge facing. Uh, the overturning failure of right ridge facing does not take place. So backfill can survive keeping embankment service, uh, emergent uh, service of the road or railway. This is the collapse of the sea walls by the erosion or by uh, uh, storm, see wave by storm. So this was fully collapsed. And this will restore to GR retaining wall like this. This is a picture uh, taken during reconstruction. This is before construction of, of right rigid facing. This is during construction of right rigid facing, and this completely one. This is a small, uh, uh, small uh, scale failure, but uh, a typical one, scarring and uh, erosion of the backfield. This was also reconstructed by the technology of GRS bridge uh, abutment, like this. And uh, here's a larger scale failure of railway embankment by scouring uh, here. This is the complete one. The river is attacking the wall uh, and embankment. This is uh, before the construction of the flood ridge facing. This is a complete one. Full height ridge facing is very effective to prevent the failure of the wall by scarring here. Here is a damage it, uh, by, to many railway structures by tsunami uh, 201. Here the before the earthquake, a tsunami, 
Here the bile duct, you can see, this was totally collapsed by Tsunami Force. This was uh, reconstructed in this way, GRS uh, 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 embankment, now facing is under construction. Uh, this uh, is expected to work as a, a tsunami barrier. So uh, a number of conventional type embankments, ten walls, a bridge collapsed by recent severe earthquake, heavy rainfall, floods, storms, and the tsunami in Japan. Many of them were restored to GR structures with full hydrated facing because of their characteristic feature, including fast restoration. Second, the high stability against natural disasters, even when constructed at the topo uh, topographically difficult site, that is slopes, uh, for example, slopes, and low construct uh, cost for construction and maintenance. Okay, the concluding remark. So this is the history of GRS structure I explained today, starting from 1998. Uh, uh, the research was started in 1982. This is a test embankment we constructed in 1982. Uh, these are my two daughters at the time. This is uh, uh, 14 years later. So this is showing a GRS retain wall with the full height digit facing of a commuter railway cable line very close to my house. This is 24 years later. Uh, this is now no GRS retain wall, uh, 15 years after construction. So the, they got married. And uh, this is 29 years later, this is a DRS written wall uh, for commuter train cable line. This is 70 years after construction. Now the number of family increased. You can see three grandchildren. This is 36 years later, uh, full, full scale model for DRS Indian Bridge uh, at the Railway Technical Research Institute. The, Eight years after construction. So now uh, uh, grandchildren is the number is four. So, uh, conclusion one a number of GRS retain wall having stage constructive hydrate facing and the related GR structure have been constructed as an important permanent soil structure for total length at about 200 kilometers including those for high-speed railway Shinkansen. This accomplishment is due to their high cost effectiveness by high performance during long-term service and against severe earthquakes, heavy rain, uh, rainfalls, and low uh, cost for construction and maintenance. GRS bridge abandonment supports a simple garter with a flexible bear, uh, uh, fixed bearing at the top of the full height facing of GRS wall. This is much more cost effective and much more stable than the conventional type abutment. About 140 GRS bridge abutment have been constructed. Since the open to service, all exhibited practically zero bump. Uh, the GRS bridge abutment is now one of the standard bridge abutment for railway in Japan. GRS internal bridge structurally integrate both uh, ends of a uh, continuous gutter to the top of the flat facing of a pair of GRS retain wall. Not using a bearing, this is much more cost effective and much more stable than conventional simple gutter bridge. GRS integral bridge is now one of the standard bridge systems for railway in Japan. A great number of conventional type embankments, retain wall, and bridge collapsed by recent severe seismic roads, heavy rainfalls, flood tsunami. And many of them were restored to GR structures having stage construction flooded facing. The following are three key breakthroughs for the development of the GR structure explained in this presentation. First is the use of flooded facing. 
for change from a low earth pressure to high earth pressure at the facing. B, from facing as a secondary non-structural component to the facing as a primary structural component. Second is this construction for change in construction from backfill after facing to the backfill before the facing. So structural, third is structural integration for reinforcement backfill for hydrogen facing and gather for a change from a statically determinate but less stable structure to statically indeterminate but more stable structure, particularly with GRS bridge abutment and GRS internal bridges. So uh, the PDF file of the relate, uh, related te uh, technical papers of GRS structure by Tatsuka et al. can be downloaded this homepage. And finally, uh, I'm, this is showing a 3R association, which are managing and controlling the construction of the DR structures, reinforced uh, structure with lead facing. So homepage is this, you can visit this homepage. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Well, <coughs> well that, that was um, an incredibly uh, good presentation. Thank you so very much for preparing all this information. Press for she. Um, I see this. I have questions here so far, and I actually I have one of my own as well. So the first one is about the embedment depth. This is from Avik Kumar Mandal, who I think is is listening from India. He said, Professor, a very, very interesting and, and thoughtful talk. What should be the minimum required depth of foundation embedment for the full height casting a better study? Please discuss. I hope you could follow that. It's about the recommended embedment depth of the facing. I think you're, you're muted. For me, you might be muted. 50 centimeter. Dinner, I think 50, oh. cent 50 centimeter. <laughs> 50 centimeters. Yes. Right. There's a simple answer. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any situations where you might recommend uh, a deeper embedment or even less, maybe depending well, on the foundation condition? Well, uh, we don't need a deeper one because uh, uh, a bearing capacity uh, of the ground below the uh, facing is not a design uh, component. So, uh, 50 centimeter enough. Excavation, if we use a, a deep a deep foundation, we need the excavation. So it increases the cost. Yes, of course. Okay. However, however. Thank you. Okay. One point. For bridge, uh, for bridge uh, abutment, for bridge abutment, the uh, stiff bearing cap uh, stiff subsoil is necessary soft uh, in that case usually we use a good soil foundation otherwise some shallow ground improvement okay to ensure yeah. uh, ensure the small residual settlement yes that, no, that that makes that makes very good sense of course yes we for bridge abutments we can't we can't be supporting that load on the soft soil of course Okay, um, and we have a question, another one from Zoe Lin. It is quite a short question. It says, as we know, lots of PVA geogrid are used in the Japanese high-speed railway. Is it, uh, really, is it really necessary and why? Uh, minimum requirement is that uh, zero textile must uh, strong against high pH, pH, high pH. So, uh, for example, uh, 
poly, uh, polyester is not good. And other HDB uh, is acceptable, but in, the, in our case, uh, all uh, any type of the textile is examined, checked uh, uh, with respect to the, the durability against high pH. Uh, this is performed by Railway Technical Research Institute. They are giving approval. <laughs> Yeah, I, that, I asked you now that that's because it's coming into contact with concrete. Is that yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I, I I I also have a question for you because in most of your sections you you show your conventional arrangement of geogrid where the geogrid is shorter at the bottom of the wall uh -huh. than at the top. Yeah. Yes. But you did have one or two sections where the geogrid was longer at the bottom of the wall and shorter at the top. So uh -huh. is there any 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 technical um, reasoning or any, anything about that particular arrangement of the reinforcement? Uh, for bridge abutment, the uh, stability is really important. Uh, overturning uh, and uh, sliding, we have to avoid. So to, to have a stable uh, back uh, approach field, the longer one at the bottom is better. This is by experiment and analysis. Well, but ordinary uh, 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 retain wall, the, um, very often we have a, a construction on slope. If we use a, a longer one uh, at the bottom, the problem uh, of excavation becomes very serious. So uh, short uh, at the bottom, uh, if this worked, this is very uh, convenient arrangement. Yes, clearly, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a, another, another question which might, might also interesting from um, Avik Kumar Mandal again. He said, uh, is there available a guideline for design and construction of the full height panel system for both walls and bridge abutments and does the available BS8006 or FHWA guideline for the wraparound facing, can that be followed? Hmm. Please, please, could you provide some help for AVIC? Uh, actually, the uh, design standard, uh, design manual, construction standard, construct manual, and material manual is a really big amount in Japanese. <laughs> and uh, I translated, I translated, and my colleague translated part of the uh, uh, design uh, uh, design standard for railways and the design manual in English. So I think uh, this was uh, provided to uh, Indian uh, railway uh, uh, ministry, of Indian railway, because they are, 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 are accepted the to construct their structure for some part. So the other one, uh, I think we can, uh, we are open, we can open some, we, we are opening that, some uh, document in English. So uh, I'll check uh, how th uh, that can be available to other people. Is that, is that something that the Indonesian chapter could distribute to the people who are listening yeah, yes, to the- I think so. uh, Webinar. But uh, but I have oh, that'd to be very that'd be very helpful. You have, I am I am not. No, the, please check first. <laughs> I am not the owner of the <laughs> documents. So no, I I understand that. I understand that. But if, if, it is, think, if it is something that we can get, it'd be very helpful. Yes, yes. I I talk to the person in charge. I think it's quite possible. I think. Right. Okay. Um, we have a, a question from Kianush Hatami. I, I'm guessing maybe from Japan. H how long do they typically have to wait for the deformation of the GRS mass to take place before the full height facing can be um, cast into position? It how long? It depends on soil conditions. Yeah. Uh, this is observation method. Uh, the settlement is ob observed. If uh, if the settlement uh, had taken place sufficiently in short time, uh, one week, two weeks possible, but uh, it, it will take a long time. In that case, uh, 
uh, we may uh, uh, perform a preloading to accelerate the uh, settlement. So all depends on the, the rate of settlement actually taking place. So it's a, a soil mechanics problem. So does so no, no, no standard. Yeah. So it's a, no standard. But does this mean then normally you, you recommend there is some kind of monitoring to, to measure Yes the, yes, the deformation of the facing. So yes, yes right. Settlement, that, settlement. That's an important feature, I guess. Yes. So settlement. Settlement. To the settlement. top or out, outward deformation? Outward or just settlement? Right. Uh, right. The, the, the oh, bottom that, of the facing. Bottom of the right. facing. Bed, bottom of the facing. Actually, right. I, the, uh, the engineer measuring the settlement at several places. But the key point is the bottom of the facing, right? Uh, uh, wall face, wall face. Sorry, but the bottom wall, of the, the wall bottom, face. Bottom of the wall face. Okay, now that's it. I, I, I have, I have another question for you myself because uh, I'm, I'm always very interested to, to learn about reinforced soil structures that have actually been subjected to very strong earthquakes, hmm. uh, and uh, I'm, I'm very aware of some in New Zealand, which which I was involved with, but I, I'm guessing with all of those walls that have been built and designed on the high-speed railway in Japan over so many years, I mean, many of them must have been strongly shaken by now by strong earthquakes. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. Is there, so is there, uh, any, any, are, there, are there any kind of records from that of, of the likely ground well, accelerations that may have taken place under these walls? Uh, the railway engi engineers in charge check whether there is damage or not. So right. no report about damage or settlement, but no seismic seismography oh, <laughs> right. graph, uh, at the wall. But nearby one, we can uh, find. We can find. Uh, it's uh, from network of uh, seismographies. For, from so yeah yeah because I know in, in New Zealand we had one wall which was actually next to it wasn't it was it was next to railway line but this one almost certainly up to 0.6 g oh for 60 um yeah points so it was very strong um that was that was the uh, kaikura earthquake um yeah ah, so oh, sorry uh, sorry I mean, I mean, earthquake a, a, a long time ago there the, we uh, find a, a seismograph record that we analyzed right. yeah for yeah yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. afterwards no yes. serious analysis uh, yeah, by, yeah. Uh, should be done. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think you, this experience uh, seems to me to be very um, very important for for engineers mm -hmm. here in Indonesia because obviously, as you well know, Indonesia also uh, is a highly seismic place. We we mm -hmm. have a lot of subduction zone and and uh, um, so I think I think the experience you described today is very valuable for oh. engineers designing structures here in Indonesia. And, and uh, again, I, I, I enjoyed very, very much your presentation, Fumio, and th thank you again for, for doing that. We have no more questions. I, mean, I, I can, you know, we might have one more question. Let me just see. I think one more just came in here. Oh, from Mr. Avik again. Well, we have, I think, probably the last question from Mr. Avik. He says, how does the precast segmental facing um, for, for retaining walls, precast, precast segmental, precast uh -huh. segmental wall, uh -huh. how can that be compared to the full height? In other words, the full height wall system that you described just now uh -huh. in consideration of long-term performance in both static and seismic con conditions, uh, which one would be more preferable? I think we know your answer to that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, for severe seismic motion, the full height is better. For, but for ordinary condition, we don't know. We can, it's difficult to find which is better. However, for railway structures, we have uh, many structures on the top and uh, electric pole, uh, uh, supply pole, uh, uh, noise barrier, and so on, so on, so on. And, uh, then the full height uh, lead facing is really convenient. Very, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the full height lead facing can support such an external load. This is practically very, very advantage, advantageous. Yeah. 
No, I can see that. It certainly is, yeah. Okay, well, so one, one more question here. It's also from uh, Zoe Lin. Uh, for GRS bridge abutment, is it better to use sand or gravel backfill to reduce the bump, especially mm. for high-speed railway? Well, okay. So, uh, so it's called, uh, the sand is acceptable. But in Japan so far, this is a, a high-speed railway, and the railway engineer is very conservative. So they are using a, a well-graded gravelly soil so far. But for a uh, road, uh, second, uh, maybe we can use a, a sandy soil if that is well compacted. Yeah, uh, I think I think I think that's very good advice as well. Yeah, I think. Um, no, I think okay, well, I think that that's uh, we've we've come to the end with the, the our questions are finished. There were some very good questions there. Um, so I think um, for me, I, I can I can let you take a rest now because it's getting quite late in Japan. Um, I would like to thank you again for providing you, this wonderful presentation. Uh, we will just. We'll distribute a PDF of your work to the people who are listening in. And um, uh, I hope you'll be coming to visit Indonesia again quite soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you very much for your attention. No, well, thank you also. Well, we, we will now, we will close down this presentation part, but if you would like to watch the quiz, yes, then yes, if yes. you follow I the instructions, you you can see how people do on your questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, bye then, Fumio. Thank you very much again. Bye-bye. And I will hand back to Rifa and the organizers. Bye-bye. Okay. Once again, thank you, Professor Tatsuoka, for your excellent presentation. And thank you also to Bapak Mike Dobi for guiding the session. Next, I would like to invite all of you for the chance to get the very interesting prize by joining a very short game we have prepared. All the questions would be from uh, Professor Tatsuoka. So in this uh, short game, the first winner will get 150,000 rupiah, and the second winner will get 100,000 rupiah. To give you a disclaimer before we play, everyone can join this quiz, but for technical reasons, only those who live inside Indonesia are eligible to get the prize. You can now directly go to your browser on your phone or your PC and then type menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot C-O-M, menti.com. You have to type the code number shown on your screen or also there in the chat box, the code is 8026-3609. Once again, go to menti.com and put the code 8026-3609. Then please fill in your name and make sure it is the name that you submit in the registration for this webinar. So later, if you win, the committee will easily contact you for the prize. Remember, the prize is very interesting. We have the total of 250,000 rupiah for two winners, and you will not want to miss this chance for those who live inside Indonesia especially. So go to menti.com and put the code 8026-3609 and fill in your name, okay? Now I will share my screen to see how many people already joined. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, we have uh, 32 people. We are still waiting for the others. So please go to your to menti.com from your phone or your PC and then input the code 8026-3609. We have three questions and all the questions are prepared by Professor Fumio Tatsuoka. So if you win uh, this game, we will have two winners tonight. Uh, the first winner will get 150,000 rupiah and the second winner will get 100,000 rupiah. And only those who live inside Indonesia are eligible for the prize. But don't worry, everyone can join this game. So I'm going to start the countdown because we're going to start the game. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. We're going to start the game now. Be ready for the first question. Please answer fast to get more points. 
can see the questions. What is the role of full height rigid facing for geosynthetic reinforced soil GRS retaining walls? So the first option, it's a long uh, option to ensure high stability of GRS RW and to use as the foundation of other structures such as bridge abutments. Second option is only for the aesthetics of wall face or is it the third option only to prevent the spilling out of the backfill? You still have roughly 15 seconds to answer the first question, but for those who answer faster, you will get more points. Okay, for the first question, five, four, three, two, one, time's up. What is the correct answer? The correct answer is the first option, the long one, to ensure high stability of GRS RW and to use as the foundation of other structures such as bridge abutments. Let's see the leaderboard for the first question. Who leads the leaderboard? We see Ariani Citra Lestari uh, leads for the first question. We still have two more questions. Let's go. Question two of three. Please answer fast to get more points. When should full height rigid facing be constructed for a GRS RW? First option, before the construction of reinforced backfill. Second option, immediately after the construction of reinforced backfill, or is it the third option, after the deformation of reinforced backfill and subsoil due to the construction of reinforced backfill has taken place sufficiently? Is it the first option, the second option, or the third option? You still have 15 seconds to answer the second question, but remember, for those who answer faster, we'll get more bonus point. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Let's see. The correct answer is the third option. After the deformation of reinforced backfill and subsoil due to the construction of reinforced backfill has taken place sufficiently. For the second question, who leads the board? Let's see. The fastest is Benny, but we still have one more question. So for those who want to win the, this uh, game, you still have one more chance. Let's see. Last question. Question three of three. Answer fast to get more points. What types of infrastructure have been constructed by geosynthetic reinforced soil GRS structures? Is it the first option, only temporary and or non-critical structures? Is it the second option, only retaining walls for road? Or the third option, many types including important critical structures such as retaining walls and bridge abutments for high-speed railways? Let's see. What types of infrastructure have been constructed by geosynthetic reinforced soil structures? Is it the first option? Is it the second option? Or is it the third option? You still have 10 seconds, but please answer faster to get more points. Five, four, three, two, one, times up. What is the correct answer? The third one, many types, including important critical structures such as retaining walls and bridge abutments for high speed railways. Okay, from 37 participants who will be two winners tonight. Let's see. We will have two winners. Congratulations to the first winner, Benny, with 2,959 points. And second winner is Ariani Citra Lestari. Both of you will get the total of 250,000 rupiah as the prize. Okay. I think that's all for the game. Now, for the upcoming webinar, we would like to invite you to the fifth NIGS Geosynthetic Webinar that will be presented in Bahasa Indonesia under the theme, 
kasus perbaikan tanah di Indonesia. Lesson learn with Bapak Profesor Insinyur Haider Anwar Makarim from Universitas Tarumanegara as the speaker. This webinar will be held on next week on June 3rd, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Jakarta time. So you can register by visiting the link bit.ly slash June 2022 or also shown on your chat box. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the end of the event. Before you leave this webinar, we would like to inform you that you can access your e-certificates and also the soft copy material from the speaker by visiting the link bit.ly slash info in IGS May 2022. And after filling out the quick survey, you will be redirected to the e-certificates. Once again, thank you for uh, for your participation. We hope we can see you at the next event. And finally, good evening and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you and see you.